This is a BMW M4 CSL. It's faster, lighter, more exclusive, and way more of a handful. <laughs> this is what happens when BMW takes a road car and re-engineers it into a track car. The M4 CSL uses the same turbocharged 3-liter inline-6 as the standard M4, but here cranks out even more power and torque. Whoa, it's me, it's me, okay, okay, it's me, all right, all right. As the CSL badge may indicate, it's also lighter, with stickier tyres, no rear seats, bespoke springs and adjustable dampers. It's a beast, but not one that everyone can handle. Oh god, this thing is good. This is really good. It certainly is, but in the world of cars, good isn't necessarily good enough. The M4 CSL doesn't have a lot of rivals, but the ones it does have are some of the greatest cars we've ever seen. Cars like the Porsche 911 GT3. Oh yes, there's a word for this, and it ain't good. This is incredible, outstanding. <laughs> it's absolutely epic. Yeah, there's no way you can be a Porsche 911 GT3. Unless, you know, it's with a GT3 RS. The GT3 gets a lot of hype, but it's completely deserved. This is a car that can be summed up in a single word. Perfection. Perfection? Perfection. All right, granted, it is a great car. It's brilliant. All right, give me a sec. How about we play a quick game of top trumps and then see how evenly matched both of these cars are? All right. Game one. Uh, let's start with the obvious one, price. About 130. It's quite expensive for a BMW. Yeah, same as mine. About 130,000 pounds. Okay. I've got one here. Up my sleeve. Power. 510 horsepower. Oh, cute. I've got 550 horsepower. Bit unnecessary. All right. Um, torque. 470. Oh, 650. I win again. I'm absolutely dominating here. Yeah, fair enough. But... I have saved all the good stuff for the end. I'm okay. going to bring it back. Okay. Is your car available with a manual gearbox? Rory, this is a race car for the road. Of course it isn't. Is it yours? It's, of course it is. It's a proper car. Show me. Well, that, that, that one doesn't have a manual gearbox in it. It is available with a PDK or a manual. But you chose the PDK. It's got the PDK in it, but it's available with the manual. So therefore I win. Well, therefore we both lose. Fine. Okay. Let's get tasty now. Weight. 1360 kilos. Okay, this is where they might have messed up a little bit because my M4 CSL actually weighs 1,625 kilos. <laughs> well, <laughs> what does CSL stand for? Uh, rather ironically, Rory, it stands for a Competition Sport Lightweight. So the person who made the lightweight bit of this car forgot to make it lightweight. I don't think he actually came in on that day. Yeah, okay, Jürgen's getting fired. Yes. Um, let's talk about top speed, 198 miles an hour. That to me sounds a little bit too dangerous. You know, to the near two ton mark, I don't like that. So BMW also don't like that. They've dialed it back to 191. Just keep it safe. Okay, but the 0 to 60 is quick though, right? What's that? That's no, very fast. Like, when, oh, it, it is. It's stonking. Yeah. With a number this time? 3.7. Oh dear. 3.4. Really? Okay. That is interesting, but at the end of the day, Rory, numbers do not maketh the man. The drivereth maketh the careth. <laughs> so how about we forget about all those stats, and then we take these both of these cars on the racetrack and find out which is quicker. Are you game? You're about to loseth. Okayeth. <laughs> Let's not crasheth. <laughs> and with that, we tooketh to the drag strip and lined up for head-to-head -head races. Big power versus lightweight, BMW versus Porsche, 911 versus M4, Alex versus Rory. Three, two, one, go. Oh, equal launch, very equal launch. I'm pulling. Traction, 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 into fourth. I'm pulling. There's one car length in it. Come on! Come on! Oh no, can I hold on, can I hold on? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! No, 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 no! Oh yes, I think I got it. I think I got it, on the line. <laughs> oh my God, that was a proper drag race.
Over the line, it was almost a dead heat. Both cars got solid launches. The 911 pulled away thanks to better traction and lower weight, but the CSL pulled it back with its big power advantage. Over the line though, it was the Porsche that took the win, but only just. And with that, the heavens opened, just in time for Alex to disappear and review the M4 CSL in some corners. Wet corners. Right. <laughs> Oh dear, oh do you have to be so on it with this car, especially in the wet. Let me talk you through drivability of this thing. Obviously, the heavens have opened. We don't have wet tyres on here, do we? But what we do have is a lot of power, an awful lot of torque, very, very limited grip, but a car that when you get your eye in, actually drifts quite nicely. The whole getting back on the straight and narrow thing, that is just not very pleasant at all. Now obviously, we haven't seen the CSL badge for about 20 years. The last one that had it was the E46 M3 CSL. And that, as we all know, was one of the purest, one of the finest handling BMWs ever made. So this car has got a lot to live up to. Compared to the M4 competition, it's 100 kilos lighter. And they've achieved that by removing sound deadening. There goes 15 kilos. The carbon ceramics that come on this car, there's another 14 kilos. And, 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 the list goes on, but 100 kilos saved. As for the engine, it is the same S58 B30 turbocharged engine. Boost pressure has increased by about 25%, giving this car an extra 40 horsepower. We're talking big numbers here. 550 horsepower, 650 Newton meters of torque. The top speed of 191 miles an hour in a four series. Whoa, what happened there? <laughs> oh, God, this is hilarious. And when I say hilarious, I mean like bloody, bloody scary. This thing literally scares me. I can barely contain this thing. Out of the box, it's a lunatic and it just wants to kill you and anyone around you within a 20 mile radius. As for handling, well, it's absolutely dominated the Nürburgring a while ago. And I think I'm right in saying that this is the fastest BMW to have ever lapped the Nürburgring. So we know that the handling is a big old tick. Uh -uh. Not for me, thank you very much. It is too lively, too rigid, too compromised for a racetrack. It is not forgiving enough. It's too much. It's too powerful. The torque comes in too quickly. It's just too aggressive. I like a softer car, turn it in and then ease on the power. Whereas with this, it's all or nothing. As you can see, all or bloody nothing. <laughs> so then, would I spend £130,000 on this car? No. Do you know what? I bet Rory's having a much better time because as for me, I have got a migraine drive in this thing. I was having a much better time. It's absolutely epic. We are dealing with a naturally aspirated four litre, <laughs> flat six, making big power and an amazing noise. Listen to it. Oh, but it was still wet. And even in the 911, you do have to be extremely careful and build into it slowly before you go flat out and hurt yourself. One of the first things you notice when you jump into a 911 GT3 compared to an M4, I think is a level of interior quality and comfort. These seats are fantastic. The seats in that are good, don't get me wrong, but they poke you in all the wrong places. Plenty of support, but a little bit of unwanted assault as well. These, absolutely brilliant. The suspension is a little bit firm, shall we say, but what do you expect? It is, pardon the cliche, a race car for the road. You can still live with it though. The defining characteristic though is definitely that engine. I'll knock it into manual. <laughs> it just howls. Four litre, flat six, no turbos, just natural aspiration and a beautiful noise. Most of it is actually intake. So it's quieter than previous generation GT3s because of you know, regulations, but the intake noise makes up for that so much. The thing revs to 9,000 RPM, so you really have to keep your foot pinned 
it can feel actually a little bit unnatural because you feel like you're going to break the thing, but that's the way to get peak torque in the GT3. Let's talk about handling now. It's a little bit wet out today. Changeable conditions, shall we say. <laughs> but it's an absolute peach. What sets the GT3 apart from most of its rivals is the front suspension. It's using double wishbone. So wishbone up top, wishbone on the bottom. And that is an absolute masterstroke by Porsche. It's an expensive setup with a lot of compromise in terms of the amount of space it takes up at the front. But this, because it isn't front engined, it means you've got that space to use double wishbone and it adds so much to the driving experience. The front end just goes exactly where you want it to go. So if you want to keep things nice and neat, you can do that. Or if you want to get a little bit fancy and get the back end out. Or you can carry massive amounts of cornering speed into a corner and that big wing on the back generates 385 kilograms of downforce. BMW haven't shown their hand when it comes to downforce, but trust me, it ain't got a wing like this and it can't corner as quickly as this. The gearbox, absolutely immense as well. It rifles up and down the box. I'm coming into a braking zone right now. Fifth gear, fourth, third, second. No issue whatsoever. I'll tell you what, there's a lightness to this car. I know the M4 CSL is trying to play lightweight as its trump card, but it's not winning that battle, believe me. In this car, you just feel so much more at one with the machine. It feels much more compact. It feels much more like a sports car that was built from the ground up to be a sports car rather than a little bit of an afterthought. The bottom line then is that both of these cars are monstrously quick and surprisingly evenly matched on paper. The CSL is more powerful but also heavier. The GT3 has less power but can carry more speed through better downforce. And both are rewarding to get to grips with but not in the same way. The M4 is more of a brute. It's unforgiving at times, especially in treacherous conditions, and delivers its performance like a sledgehammer. The GT3, though, is a more delicate tool. Still as fast, possibly faster in most situations, but designed and set up in a way that you can push it closer to the limit more of the time, without losing confidence or feeling as if it'll bite. One is a Rottweiler, ready to take your arm off. The other is two, but one that's trained to protect, respect and reward whoever's in control. Whichever car you pick, you're in for an exciting time. But for myself and Alex, it's the Porsche that takes the win.